just another test um, regarding this magnetic vortex. What we've got here is a stainless steel bolt. I don't know if you can see that, but on the bottom of that bolt I've got a little bit of wire sticking out. Um, just as a telltale smoker, that's what we're going to call it. Uh, the stainless is 316, non-magnetic, not even with a powerful Neo. Um, and the back plate is stainless as well, which is our anode that is hooked to the positive side. Our cathode is the negative side. The bolt will produce hydrogen and the plate at the back will produce oxygen. Uh, this is going to tell us if, if hydrogen is um, attracted to one pole and repelled from another. The other thing we have here is we've made up this little gizmo. It's two copper plates. They are one inch apart and they are one inch square which gives us one cubic inch. So this will um, measure the current and voltage giving us power per cubic inch of water. The rest is all sealed with rubber paint. Paint on rubber, good stuff. Uh, so we'll hook that lead back up that just fell off. Okay, so I've got uh, my two multimeters hooked up. One will give us current and the other one is going to give us the volts, volts and amps. As you can see set on DC volts and we're on the 10 amp scale set on DC. Okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to start a trail of bubbles coming off of the stainless steel bolt and then we're going to take, I've got two large neos here Going back to back, sitting in a bit of plastic. The end with the white dot is. I don't know what happened there, the camera just stopped. Anyhow, the end with the uh, white dot is our south field, and the one without the white dot is the north. Neos, they are conductive, yes. Um, so, what we have up the other end is a big stack of ferrite magnets non-conductive so we'll be trying them as well we're just going to place the magnets next to the stream of bubbles and see what happens to the bubbles uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to turn on the system and we're going to take our little magic stick here what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this stick around about where the magnets are going to be which is about there and you can see we have 2.2 millivolts or one point oh, dropping down. Okay, we've got about 1.1 millivolts at 3 milliamps per square inch of electrolyte in that position. So, handy little tool, you can measure the voltage, current which will give you watts per square inch of electrolyte throughout the fish tank. So we can have a look in different positions as to where the um, anode and cathode are placed as to where we have um, what amount of power per square inch of water. Alright, so now we're going to set the camera down. You can see, well you can't see little smoker down the bottom doesn't seem to be working. Um, I'm only running 12 volts for this test, which may be why it's not working. But anyway, what I'm going to do is set the camera down here. Pull it back a little bit. And we're going to place the south field. Oh, the little smoker's working now. You can see him just down there. That's just so we can uh, see which way the spin is. So I'm going to place the south field of the Neo next to the bolt. And as you can see there, we have a clear clockwise spin 
as our little smoker tells us, it's curling around to the left hand side of the bolt, going around the back. Get that a little closer. There you go. So the hydrogen is attracted to the south field of the bolt of the magnet. So I'm now going to turn the magnet around. As you can see, so as we have the north field next to it. And straight away you can see we have an anti-clockwise spin. As can be seen by our little smoker wire down the bottom, bubbles are curling around to the right hand side. So yes, the neos are conductive, and as they would be sending a current through the neos, we could say the right hand rule applies. So we're now going to try the big stack of non-conductive ferrite magnets. So we have the north side there at the moment, and as you can see a clear spin counterclockwise, as tells us a little smoker down the bottom. Now the bolt, as you can see, is not magnetic. Turn the ceramic magnets around, ferrite magnets, whatever you want to call them, and now we can see a clear clockwise spin as can be seen by the little smoker down the bottom. So, um, being non-conductive, the right hand rule cannot apply to this setup with those ferrite magnets because no current is passing through them. I'll just put it on the other side. Probably going to make it go dark because we won't have the light there anymore, which it does. We've got a big shadow. So we have the north side facing the bolt, anti clockwise spin. As we can see by the little smoker down the bottom. Turn these around. South field is now facing the bolt, and we have a clockwise spin as can be seen by the little smoker down the bottom, clearly. So even with non-conductive magnets, we still get a clear spin when we change the fields. The spin is opposite, and you can see our little smoker is now going straight up. That's just to show you with the strong neos even that that bolt is not even the slightest bit magnetic. Good grade stainless, will not carry a magnetic field. So there you go. Once again, the south field of our non-conductive Ferrite magnets, a clear clockwise spin, as can be seen with our little smoker, and up the top. Place the north field there, and we get a clear counterclockwise spin. as can be seen with the little smoker down the bottom. So there you go, the effect is still the same with non-conductive ferrite magnets. Interesting stuff. And of course if we swap the polarity over we get the opposite spin from the opposite pole of the magnet. Thanks for watching guys.